Hello everyone, how are you guys? I hope everything is fine, wherever you are. My name is Pepe Cuenca, I'm a Spanish Grandmaster and I'm here with all of you uh, to share uh, the game of the day of round number 8 of the European Championship, which is taking place in Skopje, in Macedonia. Uh, I'm gonna show you one extremely beautiful game which happened between Vladislav Artemiev, super strong player from Russia. Uh, over 2700 and Hrasek, uh, one uh, experienced grandmaster from the Czech Republic. Uh, his ELO rating is more or less 2600, so a really strong player. And as you can see uh, in the screen, uh, I'm, I'm showing you the standings after round eight, where you can see like a group of players with six and a half points and a big uh, number of players with six points trying to hunt them. So three rounds ago, just remember you can follow all the action in Chess24, all the games uh, with computer analysis and also uh, commentary in Spanish, for example. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the game. It's been uh, an extremely exciting game uh, with a lot of pressure from the beginning uh, and then uh, an extremely beautiful uh, finish. So yes, let's cut uh, all this introduction and then start analyzing what happened in the 64 squares. All right, so let's go. So Artemiev played c4, the English opening, right? Uh, one of my favorites, for example, Carlsen is using it a lot uh, nowadays, right? And Hrasek plays uh, the symmetric c5. So knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6. And here there are uh, different alternatives. Uh, for example, in the game, Artemiev played e3. d4 is also very possible after c takes d4, knight takes d4. Now black, if black plays g6, we could play e4, uh, transposing sorry, to the Maroxi structure, which is always nice for white. But of course, these days, most of the players here are playing uh, e6, which is uh, extremely natural. Now you want to develop this bishop by a b4 or c5. But in the game, uh, Artemiev played e3, which is very trendy nowadays. You want to install a beautiful pawn center after d4. And now uh, black could play e6 as in the game or d5. If black goes d5, white's idea is just to take on d5 and then develop this bishop by a b5. Now, um, in some cases, you could uh, ruin black pawn structure on the queen side. And you want to play uh, simple, you want to go short castle and then maybe d4, right? But in the game, Artemia played e3. Uh, e6 was played by Krasek and now d4. The main move uh, is now d5. The difference, if you take uh, straight away on d4, is the following. So you take on d4, e takes e4, d5. Now white could play c5, which is putting some trouble for this bishop now, putting some pressure for the black side. So that's why uh, mostly every player plays here d5. c takes e5, e takes d5, and bishop b5. A really natural move, developing a minor piece and then trying to go for short castle in the next move. So c takes d4 was played, e takes d4, and now Hrasek played bishop e7, which is maybe the most natural move. In my database, a lot of people have played bishop d6 with uh, big success here for the black pieces. So the point is, the bishop d6, it looks like bishop g5 is pretty annoying, right? Because uh, this nasty ping here is uh, pretty annoying. Now it looks like d5 is gonna fall. But the thing is, black can sacrifice that pawn because after short castle, knight takes d5, you can play queen a5, knight c3, and knight e4. And now as you can see here, there's a lot of pressure. The bishop on g5 is attacked. Also, this knight on c3, the bishop on b5, and black's better. And if you take straight away uh, the bishop on uh, the knight on f6, queen takes f6, knight takes d5, and queen d8, and it looks like it's not so simple to play for the for the white player, right? Because if you go short castle, which is maybe the most natural move that comes to your mind, there's bishop h2, boom! And then uh, you regain the piece back, right? And if you go knight e3 to cover the checks, then queen a5 just wins a piece on the spot, right? And if you go knight c3, which is maybe the most natural move after rook e8, there is a lot of compensation for the sacrifice pawn for the black player. So that's why bishop d6 is very, very interesting. 
But Hrasek played bishop e7, maybe the most natural move, so now bishop g5 is not so strong anymore, d5 is protected all the time. But the point is, you are not covering the e5 square, which is going to be very important in this game. So short castle was played by Artemiev, short castle by Hrasek, and now knight e5, increasing the pressure uh, of this knight on c6. Because now it's pretty tough to take this knight on e5, you take this guy on e5, now black's going to suffer. You go to e8, then queen takes e5, just wins a pawn, so you have to put some pressure on the e5 pawn. You got two ways. You can go knight d7, which runs into queen takes e5 again, and white is better. And if you go knight g4, you can just centralize your queen by playing queen d4, uh, defending this guy on e5, and also putting an eye on the g4 knight. And if black defends this pawn on d5, then you just play a3, forcing this knight to go back to a6, and then imagine what happens. Boom! Bishop takes a6, and black's pawn structure is completely ruined on the king side, so white is much better in that position. So that's why after knight e5, Hrasek played bishop d7 in this position, protecting this knight on c6, and now Artemiev continued developing his minor pieces by playing bishop g5, putting in, in direct pressure on uh, the d5 pawn, right? So rook c8 uh, was played by Hrasek. He said, you know what? I don't care about bishop takes f6 because it's actually not problematic. Uh, Artemiev played rook e1. If you play bishop f6, bishop f6, knight takes e5, black can just simply uh, gain the pawn back by taking on e5 with the bishop, right? So that's why rook e1 was played. These open files are very nice for the rook, so probably these two rooks belong to the c and the e file. And Hrasek tries to do the same. Also put a rook on the e file, rook e8. Rook c1 was played by Artemiev and now a6. Hrasek is saying, you know, I got a lot of pressure in my position. You got two bishops annoying me, so go back or die. So uh, Artemiev uh, decides to take on c6, which is very natural. If you go back with the bishop to f1, let's say, you can just play bishop e6. Now, knight takes e6 can just be met by rook takes e6. So bishop c6 was played, and now uh, what do you think, guys? Would you take with the pawn or with the bishop? Taking with the pawn would be like a positional crime because after knight a4, look at this square on c5. It's very tasty for this knight. Look at these two beautiful core cells. This knight on c5 is gonna uh, put high pressure on uh, black's queen side, right? So that's why uh, Krasik took with the bishop. Bishop takes c6. And uh, Artemiev played queen f3, connecting the rooks, bringing the queen to the action, putting pressure on d5. And here Hasek played maybe the most natural move, queen d6, connecting the rook, the rooks, sorry, but then Jing was saying a6. And then Jing wants to play after bishop h4, queen b6, which looks almost losing. Because after knight c6, b takes e6, it looks like rook takes e7, it's almost winning. Because after rook e7, bishop f6, black can't take with the pawn on f6 since there's queen g4 and then the rook on c8 is hanging. But there's the intermediate move, queen takes b2. And now rook d1, g takes f6, queen g4, queen c7, queen c8, queen c3, and black hasn't got anything better than going for the perpetual on f5, g4, and c8. All right, this was very tough to see. So, Hrasek played queen d6 and now h3, giving some pressure to the king. All uh, white pieces are in perfect harmony, so now it's time to give some pressure to the king. So, there are, no, there, there are no background problems in the future, right? So, bishop d8 was played and uh, looks natural in order to fight for the e file and now uh, rook e3. You can play bishop f4, but then after queen e6, it's not easy to move this knight because this rook on e1 is unprotected. So uh, rook e3 was played. Now Artemia thinks, okay, let's bring these two rooks to the e file, for example. And now Hrasek actually plays a really human move. He goes rook f4. Okay, doesn't look so natural, but he wants to jump with this knight to e4, right? Now it's not possible because the f7 pawn is hanging. So after knight e4, queen takes f7, and then that's not a good business for, for black, right? So that's why he goes rook f8, intending to go knight e4 probably in the next move. But the thing is, Artemiev doesn't allow that. He goes rook c to e1, 
And now 94 wouldn't be possible. Why? Because if you go 94, bishop d8, rook takes e8, knight c6. Now you see that the pawn on e4 is gonna fall. Knight takes e4, and white's, white's just a pawn up. So that's why after rook c to e1, classic play queen take queen b4, attacking two pawns, the pawn on b on b2 and the pawn on d4. And Atemir says, you know what? If you attack me two pawns, I'm gonna attack you, the rook queen to f5 and this is a really annoying move because now it's not easy to protect this rook you can never move this bishop to this diagonal since we, we can't just take on f6 winning a pawn and ruining uh, a black spawn structure this is gonna this is go gonna be almost made in the future you can never play bishop e7 since there's knight c6 and then this bishop is hanging so the only way of protecting this rook is just to move it away and rook a8 doesn't look like the best move in, I mean, the move you, you, can, you, can, you can play in the position, right? Just bringing the rook to the corner again, punished. Uh, it's being bullied, that rook, right, on the corner. So here, Artemia played the most natural move, rook d1, protecting d4. We're going to analyze from that point in, a, in, in one minute, but there was a brilliant sequence of moves here. Bishop a6 was... A fantastic shot here in this moment for Artemiev. G takes x6. The idea is queen to f4. This was extremely tough to see. Queen f4. The idea is rather simple. You want to go queen h6 and rook g3. But it's extremely deep what the engine, what the engine wants to play after king h8. So uh, the thing is, if you go now queen h6, there is g8. Attacking the queen, you can take here because the queen is protecting the rook. Now you want to bring the bishop to f6 and black has managed to defend his position. Black's a piece up and probably winning the game. But the point is, you can play a3. This is a brilliant move. You can't go queen d6 since there's knight f7 followed by queen d6. You can't go queen e7. There's knight g6 or even knight c6. So you got to go back to b6, and now the point is you have deviated the queen from the f8 rook, right? So now you want to take on h6. There's no way of playing knight g8 now since there's queen f8, and whenever you uh, protect the rook on f8, there's rook g3 threatening checkmate on g7. Rook g8 runs into mate on f7. On knight e8, you can just take boom. On f8, queen takes f8, bishop takes f8, knight f7, beautiful checkmate. So bishop h6 was extremely powerful in this position. Well, the best move here was knight e8, and the engine gives the following line. Queen takes h6, bishop f6, rook g3, king h8, knight takes e6, b takes e6. It's just losing because of rook e8. So you got to play queen d6. And then this position is a bit better for white. We much better for white. We have just uh, uh, regained the piece on c6, and there's also this brilliant shot here. Knight takes d5. Boom. Knight takes d5, and you can't take on d5 since there's rook e8. And if you take on c6, there's knight f6. Just winning, right? So you, so probably you got to go here. Bishop g7. And then reach this endgame with two pawns up for white, which is good news for the white player for Artemiev. But instead, he go he went for rook d1, protecting d4. Now it, it is all more or less clear that you can take on b2 because after rook b1, the only available square for the the black player so is a3, and there, there is this discovery move knight e4. Boom, knight e4 and. Yeah, you're going to take on f6, you're, you're going to open lines on the king side, and black is going to suffer a lot in this position. So that's why after rook d1, Hrasek didn't take on b2, but instead he went knight e8. He's uh, desperate for exchanging some pieces in this position, since, since there's a lot of pressure. Okay, he says, after bishop d8, rook d8, finally have exchanged some pieces, and looks like I can protect my, my king. But Artemiev didn't want to exchange some pieces. He goes for bishop f4, keeping the tension in the position, and Hrasek went back knight f6. Of course, he's more than happy with the repetition here, but Artemiev is not for that. 
Not every day is Christmas, he's saying to his opponent. Rook g3 was played. Now, more pressure on the g7 pawn. And king h8 was played. Rook d to d3. Now, rook takes g7 ideas comes come to our mind, right? Because now we're going to bring another rook to the action. And here, bishop e8 was played by Hrasek, protecting f7. Looks really, really natural. And here, Artemiev played a3, which is a good move. But here already, rook takes e7 was a brilliant shot. It was working already. King takes e7, and now you're going to see how beautiful is the continuation. Knight c6, boom. A whole rook and a whole piece are already sacrificed. B takes e6. The point is you're giving this square for the bishop. So after rook g3, king h8, bishop e5, there's no way of stopping bishop f6. If you go, sorry, if you go queen e7, which looks like only move, you can play queen g5. Threatening checkmate on g7. The only move is rook g8, and after bishop f6, there's going to be checkmate on g8, and black has to resign. Rook g7 was a fantastic move, but also a3 is not a bad move. Uh, black could try to survive with queen b6 here, but he took on b2, and now, boom, rook g7. Artemiev, he didn't do it in the first uh, time, but in the second time, he did it. Rook takes g7. King takes e7, rook g3, king g8, king h8, sorry, and the point is the following move, which is extremely beautiful. Knight takes d5. Boom! So basically, black is forced to take on d5. If black doesn't take on d5, we're gonna take on f6, and that's gonna be checkmate. Knight takes d5. Remember, white has already sacrificed one rook and one piece, so. It has to uh, be checkmate, otherwise it would be losing, right? But Artemiev played bishop a6 with the simple idea of going bishop g7 and bishop f6 checkmate. At this point, Hrasek played bishop f6, which looks very nice, protecting g7. If you go here, rook g8, then rook takes, king takes, queen g4, followed by queen g7, checkmate, right? So that's why Hrasek played bishop f6. And here uh, it comes one of the most beautiful finishes that I've seen in the last days or weeks. How do you finish your opponent here with the black pieces? Come on, guys, you got one minute to see it. You, you can just pause the video and then uh, find a way uh, Artemiev crushed his opponent in this moment. So he played the brilliant move, queen takes f6. Boom! Sacrificing the queen and one is asking there's almost no more pieces for the white player in the board He says he has sacrificed even his ass in this game So the point is after knight f6 bishop g7 King g8 bishop f6. This is just checkmate. That's why after queen f6 Hrasek For sure my pronunciation about Hrasek is not the right one, but I still don't speak Czech so all right, guys, so this has been uh, the game of the day of round number eight. Just remember, you can follow all the action in Chess 24 of the remaining three rounds. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. It's It's been a pleasure for me to be with all of you guys here. So it's time to work. It's 8 a.m. now. So let's go and work, guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. If you, if you drink, don't drink. Bye.